Hi everyone, here's a new video with exercises on the Laplace transform. So today we'll solve some exercises together and hopefully this will help you understand the Laplace transform better. I'm Gio, an assistant professor at UPF, which is in Barcelona. On my channel I upload theory and tutorial classes on signals and systems, so this is the right channel for you to learn the basics very quickly. Uh, let's get started with today's exercises. The first exercise gives us a uh, transfer function h of s of a certain signal, okay? And uh, it says that it's possible to build such system as cascading um, two first order filters or as the parallel of two first order filters, okay? So we should determine the transfer functions of these four filters in, in the two cases, basically. So let's start with this. Uh, we write the expression for the denominator of h of s uh, this, this is going to be useful to determine the roots of this polynomial. Uh, so by just solving, we find that there are two roots, minus 2 and minus 1. So that means that h of s can be conveniently written uh, this way, 1 over s plus 1 uh, times s plus 2, right? So let's start with the first part of the exercise, the cascade or the series of two systems. So here what I'm doing is I'm decomposing H of S as the cascade of two systems, H1 and H2, right? So I want to determine transfer functions for H1 and H2. How to do that? Well, I write H of S as a product. Uh, so it is simply given by one over S plus one times one over S plus two. Then I'm already done because that implies that 1 over s plus 1 and 1 over s plus 2 are the respective transfer functions of the two systems that compose h of s. In the second case, I'm working with the parallel. So this is what a parallel looks like. It means that the input goes to uh, two systems and then I sum the two outputs, okay? So this is the parallel between two systems, h3 of s and h4 of s. So in order to determine the transfer functions, I write h of s as a sum uh, so I need to determine two coefficients, a and b. How to do that? Well, just by equating uh, the, the, the partial fraction expansion to the original expression, I get two equations in two unknowns, a and b, which I can solve very easily, determining that a is 1 and b is minus 1. So I can write h of s this way, 1 over s plus 1, which is going to be my h3 of s, minus 1 over s plus 2, which is going to be my h4 of s. Let's move on to another exercise. So in this case, I'm given a um, signal x of t, which is e to minus a uh, absolute value of t, okay? Uh, I have represented this signal at the top right, as you can see. Um, so you can conveniently represent this or look at it by um, interpreting as the sum of two uh, sub-signals, okay? One for negative times and one for positive times. The one for negative times uh, is a growing exponential, the one for positive times is a decaying exponential, okay? So I want to determine the Laplace transform and study it. So let's do that. Um, I'll do that uh, simply by calculating first the Laplace transform of x1 of t and then the one of x2 of t, and then I'll just sum them up easily. So here is the definition of the Laplace transform. If you recall from our theory classes, is the integral of our signal times e to minus st in dt, okay? So S is a complex variable, as you might recall, which I can represent as sigma plus J omega, okay? Sigma is the real part. It's going to be very important to study the convergence of the Laplace transform. And then uh, J omega is the imaginary part. So if I keep going with my calculations, here is the integral of E to minus A T U of T, which is my signal. And then I just calculate the integral. And uh, what I find out is that, um, let's look at the expression for the integral, okay? We have this exponential, it's a fraction that I have to evaluate between zero and infinity. So here the main point is, when does this converge and when does this not converge, okay? So as we usually do, uh, we're going to substitute plus infinity in t and then zero in t, okay? So the convergence is going to be determined by whether when I replace uh, plus infinity at t, this converges or not. And as you can see, uh, if a plus sigma, which pre-multiplies t uh, in the exponential, is negative, then I have no convergence, okay? Because basically I have minus a negative number times t, and when t goes to plus infinity, this diverges, it goes to infinity, okay? So long story short, when a plus sigma is negative, or equivalently when 
uh, sigma is um, smaller uh, than uh, minus a, or equivalently, when the real part of S is smaller than minus A, I have no convergence, okay? But in the other case, I do have convergence. So actually, when A plus sigma is positive, well, then I have a result for this integral, for this Laplace transform, uh, which I can write in a compact way as 1 over S plus A. So to sum up, uh, the Laplace transform of X1 is 1 over S plus A when the real part of S is larger than minus A. That's the region of convergence. So let's just take note of that, and then we can keep going with the second signal, uh, x2. Um, here I'm just representing the region of convergence for x1, so it's going to be a half plane to the right of minus a. Now, as I, as I said, we proceed with x2. Okay, we use the same definition, just same as before, but this, this case um, gives us a, a different expression, uh, because x2 of t... Uh, is non-zero for negative times. So now, as you can see, my final expression has to be evaluated between minus infinity and zero if, if I just solve the integral. So now the convergence, again, will be determined by a minus sigma, the term that multiplies t in the exponential, okay? So when t goes to minus infinity, I want a uh, minus sigma to be positive. Otherwise, there'll be no convergence. So let's write that down. When a minus sigma is negative, obviously, there is no convergence, okay? But when a minus sigma is positive, which means that the real part of s has to be smaller than a, then there is convergence, and the result of this Laplace transform is very simple. It's minus 1 over s minus a, if we just substitute 0 in the expression. Uh, so let's just write this down. We take note of this and we can also represent it graphically. In this case, the region of convergence is a left half plane to the left of A. Cool, then what about X uh, of S, which is the Laplace transform of the overall signal X of T, okay? It's going to be given by the sum of those two. So if I just calculate the sum, it's simply given by minus two A over S squared minus A, A squared. It's just simple algebraic manipulations. But what about the region of convergence? So x of s will converge only if x1 of s converges and x2 of s converges too, okay? So basically, for the region of convergence, I have to look at the intersection of the two respective regions of convergence for x1 and x2, okay? So as you can see, the result is going to depend on a, in particular, whether a is positive or negative. Let me show you that. So uh, the respective regions of convergence are real part of S larger than minus A and smaller than A. So if A is a positive number, this is the situation, okay? The intersection is something in between minus A and A, and there is a region of convergence, which is real part of S between minus A and plus A. That's good. But when A is negative, as you can see, there can be no intersection between these two regions of convergence because uh, one of them will converge uh, to the right of minus a and the other one to the left of minus a, or plus a, sorry. So there is no intersection and the region of convergence is empty, is uh, the null set. So let's move on to the third exercise for today. Now we're given two different signals uh, in part a and in part b and we want to calculate uh, the Laplace transform and studying. Okay, so let's start from the first one. So in this case, uh, my signal is given by the difference between two exponentials, okay? And so I can just use the linearity property of the Laplace transform and calculate two Laplace transforms separately for convenience. So let's start with the first one. It's the Laplace transform of three e to minus two t u of t, okay? So I just applied the definition I recall once again that S is a complex variable uh, given by sigma real part plus j omega imaginary part. So uh, I write it this way because the convergence of the Laplace transform is determined by the value of sigma. So it's convenient to separate S into sigma plus j omega at the beginning and then put it together at the end after I have studied the convergence. So if I do this, this is the result of my integral and I notice that for this integral to converge, when t goes to plus infinity, I need 2 plus sigma to be positive, okay? So I keep going with my calculations. The result is simply going to be 3 over s plus 2 for real part of s larger than minus 2, okay? So uh, I'm going to take note of this, and then I will proceed 
uh, to transform the second part of the exponential. Um, so here now, uh, same thing, okay, again, I decompose my signal and I go study the convergence, okay? The convergence occurs when uh, one plus sigma is positive, because if one plus sigma is negative, then when t goes to plus infinity, then this diverges, okay? So I keep going with my calculation. So similarly to the previous case, here is the Laplace transform minus two over s plus one for real part of s larger than minus one this time. So let's write that down two. And, and now let's look at the overall Laplace transform. Okay, I have an expression for it, but where does it converge? So uh, it has two poles, okay? Here's the expression of the very simple manipulations. It's s minus one over s plus two times s plus one, okay? So that there are two poles in minus two and minus one. So I represent them. There's also a zero in plus one, okay? So I know that the regional convergence will be delimited by poles, and it's going to be the intersection between the two regions of convergence, uh, right? So the first one, is a real part of s larger than minus two. So I represented it here in green. The other one, which I represent in red, is real part of s larger than minus one. So the intersection is going to be real part of s larger than minus one. Let's move on to part B of the exercise now. So uh, this time the exponential multiplies a sine function. So it might look a little bit trickier to do the Laplace transform, but nevertheless, it's, it's not that difficult. Let's do that together. So x of s, by applying the definition, is the integral of my signal times e to minus s t dt, okay? So to solve this, I can recall that the sine of 2t can be written as e to j 2t minus e to minus j 2t over 2j, okay? Uh, I have decomposed the complex variable s again into sigma plus j omega because it's going to be easier for me to study the convergence. So now let's do the calculations and I split this into two integrals. I solve them separately. Here's the first one, okay? It's this integral. Uh, that's the result of the integral, which I have to evaluate between minus infinity and zero. Then I have another one, which I also have to evaluate between minus infinity and zero. Why minus infinity and zero? Well, notice that there was a u of minus t in my signal, okay? So the signal is non-zero only between minus infinity and zero. Cool. Now let's study the convergence and let's see that when t goes to minus infinity, I need that term in the exponential, one minus sigma, to be positive, okay? That is going to be my condition for convergence. So I keep going with the calculations and here is what I get, okay? The, the convergence will be guaranteed when real part of s is smaller than one. So uh, let us write that down in a more compact way, okay? So if I just proceed with very simple algebraic manipulations, here is the final result that I obtain. X of s will be minus two over s squared minus two s plus five for real part of s smaller than one. So uh, here I represent the two poles. There are two complex conjugate poles, as you can see. Uh, it's the roots of the denominator of X of s. And these are at 1 plus 2j and 1 minus 2j. I have represented them on, at the bottom right. And the original convergence is going to be to the left of, of, that, um, of, of those two poles, okay? So the two poles delimit the original convergence as usual, right? So here I'm taking note of my result because I want to show that there's also an alternative way to obtain the same result. So could I have done it differently? Yes, I could. Uh, if I recall this property, of the Laplace transform, which is that a shift in the s domain corresponds to a multiplication by an exponential in the time domain. So in particular, a shift by s0 in the s domain corresponds to a multiplication by e to s0 in the time domain. And what about the region of convergence? It's going to be the same region of convergence, but shifted by a quantity real part of s0. So if I recall this property, I can obtain the same result through a different reasoning. Let's do that. So uh, e to t sine of 2t or minus t can be written this way, right? By uh, splitting the sine into two exponentials, okay? So let's look at these two terms separately. Here's the first one. The Laplace transform of this term, according to the property I have just uh, recalled for you, can be written as one over two j, just a multiplication factor. Uh, times the Laplace transform of e to t u of minus t evaluated for s uh, 
for s that becomes s minus 2j okay so instead of evaluating it at s i evaluate it at s minus 2j because the s zero i have in this case is 2j okay uh, right the regional convergence will not change because the shift to j is purely imaginary so the real part of that is zero okay the same thing can be said for the other term pretty much uh, equivalently so uh, this will be given by minus 1 over 2j, the Laplace transform of that original signal, e to t, u of minus t, but evaluated at s plus 2j. Again, same region of convergence because the real part of 2j is 0. So now what I need to do is recall what's the Laplace transform of that. So what the Laplace transform of e uh, to t, u of minus t is simply given by minus 1 over s minus 1, for real part of s uh, smaller than one, you can just recalculate this by yourself. It's a very simple integral, and we have um, we have uh, seen this uh, previously. So uh, now I just proceed, and I obtain that uh, my respective Laplace transforms are given by one over two uh, j and minus one over two j respectively. That multiply that Laplace transform in light blue minus 1 over s minus 1 but evaluated for um, s minus 2j and s plus 2j respectively okay and the original convergence doesn't change so now let's just put all the pieces together i have to sum these two uh, laplace transforms in purple and here's what i obtain it's 1 over 2j that multiplies minus 1 over s minus 2j minus 1 minus the other part okay equivalently and if i just do some simple uh, manipulations well then I obtain exactly the same expression as before. So uh, as promised today, we solved some new exercises on the Laplace transform together, and I hope this helps you understand this very important concept. So please keep watching the other exercises and the other videos and subscribe to this channel to know when I upload something new. See you in the next class.